a couple months back, I did a home studio tour. But in reality, I don't spend a lot of time here recording and making music. I actually spend a lot of time going other places and making music because I just am very busy. So I thought it might be helpful if I did a what's in my bag type video. So let's do it. What, what, what up, Niz? What's up? I'm Nazario. On this channel, I explore music business, tech, and creation. And today, we're talking some tech. So this video is actually going to have two functions. The first function is this is going to be one of those what's in my bag videos where I show what I take with me on the go, showing all the tech that I use throughout the day, whether it be music related or just video related. The second function of this video is gonna be a holiday gift guide of sorts for that techie music nerd person in your life. Or if you just wanna see what other people have so you can daydream about having it, it can be that too. Either way, we're gonna have a great time in this video. So you might as well just go ahead and hit the like button now. And if you're interested in seeing more music related content from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button too, along with the notification bell. But before we start taking a look through my backpack, DistroKid sponsoring this video. So you should already know who DistroKid is by now, honestly. Um, if you don't, let's talk about it. DistroKid is my preferred method for releasing my music to the world. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but we're just gonna talk about one right now. DistroKid has so many great features that you can use to add that professional touch to your promotion strategy for your music. You can make promo cards, mini videos, and make your YouTube channel an official artist channel. All those things take your music release from looking like an amateur music release to a professional music release. So if you wanna get all those benefits, then all you need to do is sign up today. I'll make it even easier for you. If you click on the link in the description below, you'll get 7% off your first year of membership with DistroKid. And when you use that link, it also helps out the channel. So thanks for that as well. And I only named a few features that you get with your DistroKid account. So sign up today and explore and find out everything they have in store. I don't know why I decided to run, but I wanted to anyways. I don't have anything else to say, but thanks for watching. Use the link in the description below and get 7% off. And now let's get to the video. So I feel like in order to have a good what's in my backpack video, you have to start with the backpack. This backpack is my go-to backpack at the moment. It's a little worn out, but that's because I use it all the time. It's by Oakley. It's their utility organizing backpack. It's probably meant more for like camping or whatever, but I'm a tech person, so I use it for that. The thing that I like about this backpack is that it has so many pockets. Something that I personally care about, and you can ask my wife. So having a backpack with multiple pockets is basically essential for me. Another thing that I like about the backpack is that it actually has a pocket for you to put your laptop in so that it doesn't just flail around and do whatever in your backpack while you're walking around. That's very nice, very helpful, very handy. So the first item we're gonna start with in this backpack is actually a hard drive. And you're actually gonna see a recurring theme with this throughout this video. I need slash love storage as much as I love pockets. So the first in this series of hard drives that you're gonna see in this video is this one terabyte SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. This SSD is really great because of how small it is. Like it's super portable. I can just throw it in my backpack and take it anywhere that I go. It's got as much storage as my computer so I could technically store my whole computer on it if I wanted to. One of the things that I do like about this hard drive is that because it's an SSD, it's extremely fast. The other thing that makes this SSD so quick is that it uses USB type C for connection. So that's really great for fast transfers and even editing off of it directly. So at one point I was actually throwing video projects onto this so I could edit them really quick. Um, not as much now because I have a different thing for that and we'll get into that later on in this video. But this used to be my go-to but I still use it for storing files that I just need to take around with me and just to save space on my actual computer. My second hard drive that I have in my backpack is this Western Digital My Passport. It's 500 gigs and it's great. So you might be wondering why I have more than two hard drives. You might be assuming that maybe I just have a bunch of files that I need to have in multiple places. And that is actually kind of true, but, <laughs> but that's not why I actually have two. What I actually use this hard drive for is to actually transfer files between PC computers and Mac computers. 
I personally have a PC desktop that I built and then I also have a MacBook Pro that I take on the go, which we'll be talking about that later. But because of that, it can just get annoying to have to transfer files back and forth between a Mac and a PC. You could use the cloud, but you might have to wait for it to actually do that. So my solution has been to have a hard drive that I have specifically formatted to go between a Mac and a PC. There are some drawbacks though. For example, you can only put files that are no larger than four gigs on a hard drive when you have it formatted in the way that I have it set up. Also, if this is something that you're curious about learning how to do, let me know, drop a comment below, and I can actually do a video explaining what I did to be able to make this if this is something that you've been trying to figure out. So we're now to the third and final hard drive in this series of hard drives. I figured we just knock them all out up front really quick. And this one's going to be insane. The hard drive I'm talking about is this six terabyte SanDisk G Drive, right there. You can see the name right there. You might be wondering why I need six terabytes of space. And it's because I do video and not just for YouTube. I do video for a bunch of different people. So as a result, I need to have all that video stored somewhere so I can quickly and easily access it. And I was running out of space on my hard drives to be able to store all the video. So my solution was this hard drive. One thing to point out that's different about it between the other two that I have is obviously it's way bigger. It has a lot more storage, but instead of it being an SSD, it's actually a regular optical hard drive. That means that there is a physical disk inside of it that is spinning around that the information is stored on and is not as fast as an SSD, but also SSDs are crazy expensive and I could not afford to buy a six terabyte SSD to just walk around with as much as I would have loved it. So I did a little bit of digging and I actually came across the G drive and the thing that sold me on it was that it actually uses Thunderbolt 3 as the connection method. That means that even though it's a hard drive, which isn't generally as fast as an SSD, it does make up for it a little bit with that Thunderbolt 3 data transfer um, because that's faster than a regular USB. So now that we got the storage out of the way, let's go to the next item in my backpack. And that is my 2019 60, that's upside down. So this is my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. I got as much as I could out of it so I could use it for video editing if I needed to on the go or just for making music since I am a music producer and all that stuff. It was an upgrade from my 2012 MacBook Pro that still had the CD drive. One downside to this Mac is that the only ports on it are USB-C ports and a headphone jack. If I need to plug in the uh, Western digital hard drive, I can't just plug it in without having an adapter or something like that. So I have a couple solutions for that. The first solution is this USB type C hyper drive hub. So I got this one specifically because I was hoping that the display port connection would actually allow me to use my Apollo twin with it directly. Um, but it didn't, it's still a great hub because I can, like I said, plug in hard drives. I can actually even use ethernet, HDMI, um, or you plug in an SD card for when I'm editing videos and things like that. The other cool thing is that it almost matches the space gray of my Mac and it's made out of a metal material. So it's sturdy. Sometimes I don't always feel like having to pull that out just to plug in something like the hard drive that I was talking about. So my solution for that has been these little Nanda USB-C to USB a adapters. So it gives me the ability to quickly just convert whatever cables I might need into a USB-C cable so that I don't have to bother with a hub when I don't want to. So that's really great when I just want to plug in a keyboard or something or even just a hard drive. It saves me a lot of time and they're not that expensive either. I bought four of these things. I lost two of them, so I only have two left. So as a music producer, we are now finally getting into the actual music related gear. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about in that world is headphones. I feel like you always need to have a good pair of headphones to just take with you. So what I've been carrying around lately have been these Sennheiser HD 280s right here. And these will be just be what I use whenever I'm on the go working on music. They are comfortable and they isolate the sound enough where I can actually hear what I'm working on. So it's really great for music producers on the go. And then the best part, that was more awkward than I wanted it to be but they fold up. My one downside though, is that the cable is attached 
So if this cable ever shorts out, I'm gonna have to buy a whole new pair of headphones or go through the trouble of fixing the wire myself, which I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm probably just gonna buy a new pair of headphones. So the next thing I keep in my backpack when I'm on the go is this Arteria Mini Lab. And this is the Mark I version. So I got it when they were still including the full version of Analog Lab. They don't do that anymore. It's just the light version. This one has clearly been through a lot. It's got a lot of scratches and dust and wear on it, but it's gotten me through a lot. I don't necessarily always like the smaller keys, but it gets the job done. The other thing that I like about it is that it has this faux wood grain finish on it. So it looks a little, it just looks different. A lot of people have the Akai keyboard and I'm just different. So I tend to gravitate towards uh, stuff that's not what everybody else has sometimes. One little feature that not everybody would actually appreciate, but I do, is that you can actually connect a full-size sustain pedal into this keyboard. So that means that you can have your sustain and everything like that, or you can even code it to be a start stop button for your software or whatever, if you're into doing technical stuff like that. And that's what's in my backpack. I hope you enjoyed looking at all my stuff that I have. And uh, if it gave you some ideas about what you might want or what you might want to get for somebody, that's always a plus and a bonus. There are going to be links in the description below. They're not affiliate links because I think I've said this before, but I'm pretty sure Amazon hates me. So because they're not affiliate links, uh, you can hit the like button and that will be the currency that I use to pay my bills. So let me know what you think. Do you think that I have a problem buying things? Yes or no? The answer is yes, but uh, whatever. <laughs> So if you made it this far in the video, first of all, I just want to say thank you for watching to the end. And I also want to let you know that this is actually going to be the last video for the year because I'm trying out this thing where I take a break in December from videos to uh, spend time with my family and my wife and things like that. Second, you might as well subscribe if you want to get more videos from me because this one's about to end, so I don't want you to be sad or anything. You can just start the next video that's gonna pop up wherever it is on the screen, and it'll be like I never left your life. So I don't think I have anything else to talk about in this video. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you in my next video next year. See ya.